In this video, we're going to talk about price difference. And this only comes into play when we are looking at standard cost. So in our product categories, we're going to look at our standard price product. And we're going to see that we have a costing method set as standard price and an inventory valuation set as automated. Our price difference account here is set to this uh, net price difference account. And if I look at it, you'll see that it's an expense account. It's going to handle our net price difference between what we have set on our product versus what we have set or on our vendor bill or our purchase order. So those two things can be different and that's going to be, create a variance between our purchase price and the costing method that we have set on our product. So we might have a product cost of $30, but when we actually purchase the product, our vendor charges us 32. And if we're using standard price, that's not going to update on our product. However, we need to account for that difference. And that difference will go in our net price difference. Now that can be both a positive variance or a negative variance or a favorable or unfavorable variance, depending on how you want to word it. And in this example, we'll look at when and how this price difference account gets hit. So all we need to do is create a new purchase order. And we'll, again, we'll use vendor one here. And we're gonna use our standard product. So product one, standard price. And the standard price, if we go into our product here, is $20. So what we're gonna do is first we'll increase this and we'll save and confirm this order, receive our products in, and we're gonna look at and create a bill. So we'll just simply create a bill here and I will save this. Now I will confirm it. And we'll see that the system automatically creates a couple of extra lines here. We have our stock interim receive, which is going to offset our stock interim uh, received from our reception of our products and that product move for $20. Well, this one is 22, but we also need to offset this $2 uh, variance here, right? Because our products at 20, so when we receive the product in an inventory, our stock in term received account was credited for only $20. Now our purchase price is 22. So this is the default line that gets created. Then we need to offset that by crediting $2 because the $20 is already accounted for from our stock moves. And then we also need to uh, um, offset that extra $2 and we're going to move that into our net price difference account, which will hold that balance. Then of course we have our total value in our accounts payable to pay our vendor. So, our net price difference account is always going to automatically get hit when we're using standard cost, automated inventory valuation for our net price difference to consume the, the variance between our purchase price and the cost set on the product. So now if we wanted to look at all of our variance for all of our product, we can go into our accounting. We'll go and look at our journal items. We can look at our price difference account and we'll look at our account for price difference. And we can see that we have a debit for all of our labels here, but we can also look at the product so we can view it by product as well. And maybe we wanted to group it by product. We only have one here, but maybe it's helpful to group it by product. And we'll see that we have a debit. So $22 here for our price difference account, which is going to give us a total variance of $22. And we can also view that inside of a pivot table, maybe by month if we need to adjust or look back upon our uh, variances so that maybe we adjust our standard cost to accurately reflect what we're actually purchasing our products for. And if that's the case, we can view this in a nice pivot table with all of our values grouped by month. And that's really it. That's all you need to know about price difference. And we covered that a little bit earlier when we looked at inventory. But I did want to cover it again because it's part of our accounts payable.